Implicit Solutions, Level 1. In this video, we will learn about implicit solutions to differential equations. You might have heard the term implicit function from your study of precalculus and differential calculus. For example, in precalculus, you learn about conic sections, such as circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. These functions are typically represented by an implicit relation. In your differential calculus class, you learn how to take the derivative of implicit functions. For the most part, we usually deal with explicit functions, that is, a function in which the dependent variable is expressed solely in terms of the independent variable, along with some constants. For example, the following functions are explicit functions. In the same manner, an explicit solution to a differential equation is one in which the dependent variable is expressed solely in terms of the independent variable, along with some constants. In other words, the variable y appears once, either on the left or right side of the equation, and is also raised to the first power. In these videos, we can think of an explicit solution as an explicit formula of the form y equals phi of x, that we can manipulate, evaluate, and differentiate using standard rules. We recently seen various explicit solutions in the previous videos. Every single example from the previous videos involve explicit solutions. Unfortunately, once we start solving ordinary differential equations, our methods of solution do not always lead directly to an explicit solution. This is particularly true when attempting to solve nonlinear first order differential equations. As a result, we have to be content with a relation or expression that defines a solution implicitly. In general, a relation of the form g of x and y equals zero is said to be an implicit solution of an ordinary differential equation on an interval i, provided there exists at least one function that satisfies the relation as well as the differential equation on i. If you happen to solve a differential equation and found a solution of the form g of x and y equals zero, then there exists at least one function that satisfies both the relation, that is, g of x of phi of x equals zero, and the differential equation on an interval i. At times, if the implicit solution is fairly simple, we may be able to solve for y in terms of x, and obtain one or more explicit solutions. For the most part, there is usually no need or, as a matter of fact, it's just plain impossible to try and solve an implicit solution for y explicitly in terms of x. The best we can do is to numerically generate the graph of the solution and determine an appropriate interval of definition. For example, let's verify the following implicit solution. x squared plus y squared equals 9. And the differential equation to verify is y prime equals negative x over y. Just the way we verified explicit solutions of ODEs, we first need to find the derivative of the solution. Notice that we're going to have to find the derivative of this function by implicit differentiation, a technique first introduced way back in your differential calculus course. If you need a refresher, you can always look back at the Calculus 1 videos. All right, taking the derivative of this function implicitly, with respect to x, we obtain the following expression. Now, if we were to solve for y prime, we would obtain the following. Simplifying the expression, we see that y prime is equal to negative x over y. If we substitute y prime into the differential equation, we see that both the left and right hand side match. Hence, this implicit function is a solution to the differential equation. Next, we need to find an interval i of definition. To find this interval, let's go ahead and plot this implicit solution. Recall that this equation describes a circle with center located at 0, 0 and with radius equal to 3. At first glance, you might be tempted to define the entire circle as your interval of definition. Unfortunately, this would be incorrect. Recall that a solution to a differential equation has to be differentiable at the given interval i of definition. Notice that this function would not be differentiable at x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3 because the tangent line at these points will be vertical and therefore undefined, meaning the implicit function is not differentiable at these points. As a result, we will need to label these points with open circles. 
Notice that this solution is now broken up into two semicircles. It turns out that we can actually find an explicit solution to this differential equation. Let's take a look at the implicit solution. Notice that we are able to solve for y in terms of x. All we need to do is to isolate the variable y. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. y equals positive negative the square root of 9 minus x squared. Notice that we were able to find two explicit solutions to the differential equation. The first is the positive square root of 9 minus x squared. And the second is the negative square root of 9 minus x squared. Notice that these two functions satisfy the relation, that is, x squared plus the first explicit solution squared equals 9, and x squared plus the second explicit solution squared equals 9, as well as the differential equation. Moreover, each explicit solution represents a segment of the implicit solution. The first explicit solution forms the top semicircle, and the negative explicit solution forms the bottom semicircle. In addition, Notice that the domain of the explicit solution is defined from negative 3 inclusive to positive 3 inclusive. But, as we just saw, in order to satisfy the differential equation, these solutions can't be defined at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. As a result, we have two options for our interval of definition. We can use the first explicit solution and define our interval of definition from negative 3 exclusive to positive 3 exclusive. Or we can use the second explicit solution and define our interval of definition from negative 3 exclusive to positive 3 exclusive. Either of these intervals can be used as our interval of definition. In a much later video, we will be required to choose one interval over the other. For now, either of the explicit solutions along with their intervals are acceptable answers. The final thing I want you to be aware of when dealing with implicit solutions is to make sure that any explicit solution that you happen to find has to be a real valued function. For example, say that we are asked to verify the following implicit solution, x squared plus y squared equals negative 9. Notice that the only difference between this implicit function and the one from the previous example is that this one is equal to negative 9. If we were to solve for an explicit solution, we would obtain the following expression. y equals positive negative the square root of negative 9 minus x squared. Notice that any value of x will force us to take the square root of a negative number. And therefore, we are unable to draw a graph of this function, since it is not a real valued function. Although the explicit solutions are not real valued functions, they nevertheless satisfy the relation, and they also satisfy the differential equation. So we have to be careful when finding explicit solutions of implicit relations. The implicit solution might satisfy the differential equation, but an interval of definition cannot be determined because the explicit solution is not a real valued function. When this occurs, we say that the implicit relation is a formal solution to the differential equation. Keep in mind that the implicit relation is not a solution to the ODE since no interval of definition can be defined in any interval. But, the relation just happens to formally satisfy the differential equation. Alright, to sum up, a solution of the form y equals phi of x is called an explicit solution of an ordinary differential equation on the interval i. Many differential equations don't have explicit solutions. The best we can do for these equations is to eliminate the derivatives that appear in the equation and to simplify the equation into a derivative-free equation of the form g of x and y equals zero. This relation is called an implicit solution of the differential equation. Implicit solutions are perfectly acceptable and in some cases necessary, as long as the equation actually defines y as a function of x. Keep in mind that explicit solutions of implicit relations are sometimes difficult, if not impossible to solve for algebraically. In any case, explicit solutions are preferable, and you are encouraged to find them whenever possible. Alright, in our next video, we are going to cover a couple of examples illustrating how to verify implicit solutions to ordinary differential equations, as well as defining appropriate intervals of definition.